Okay, it's fine. Uh, hello. Uh, sorry. My name is uh, Francois Cartoni. Uh, I am one of the VLC uh, developers for uh, a long time now. Uh, mostly working on uh, demuxers, uh, which means uh, we usually care about taking all the broken formats we see and make them available to the core to be able to play back. Also working on on decoders, uh, did a lot of work on adaptive streaming um, and also on uh, subtitle stack. Uh, I'm, uh, Videolan is uh, managed by uh, Videolan, uh, sorry, VLC is, uh, is uh, managed by Videolan, which is a French non-profit organization. Uh, we are 40, a bit more, 40 members. We survive with donations, uh, which we use for servers to build your releases. Uh, to travel, to be here, for example. Uh, and we also have uh, our own conference uh, in September, which is if you Dev Days, which is usually held in Paris. Um, this was uh, last year. Um, so we, we have many, many projects. Um, VLC is just one project. But we have uh, a lot of streaming tools. Uh, we have uh, codecs uh, for encoding your movies, like uh, the well-known X264, uh, X265. We also have no everyone decoders. Uh, we also have a special library for your DVDs or your Blu-ray. Um, and I will talk about uh, a bit about the 3.0 that you might have of the desktop. So that was our first unified release, uh, where we did enable hardware decoding by default. Uh, we brought some uh, 360 video, uh, 3 audio support, uh, and a new adaptive stack, uh, which uh, well, I worked a lot on it. Uh, with HLS, Dash, smooth streaming. Uh, we enabled HDMI pass-through. Uh, someone uh, did the new HTTP stack, which is somewhere there. Uh, and we also offered the Chromecast support, which was a long-awaited feature, and which uh, introduced us a lot of delay for that release. So numbers are, uh, we serve uh, one million uh, downloads a day on our servers. Uh, on more, uh, for the latest release, uh, we have uh, more than 200 million downloads, including the dates. And this year, uh, we passed the three billion downloads counter in uh, Las Vegas, uh, that was a really popular event. Uh, so, as I said, we did enable hardware decoding by default. That was a big change between VLC 2 and uh, VLC 3. So, it was by default, but uh, the point was Hardware decoding is fast. Uh, you can do 8K at 60 FPS. Uh, this is really doable on a really uh, low power uh, CPU, as long as you hardware provide it. So it provides a huge benefit. Um, on our Video pipeline side, uh, we have, uh, so w when you decode, uh, you can do uh, a lot of things like uh, after decoding, like scaling, applying video effect, uh, rendering subtitles, for example, doing tone mapping if you, are, if you have HDR videos, and do rendering on the CPU, like it was done on the VLC2. Or you can do it on the GPU, 
So you can do everything in, on the GPU or in the CPU, but when you want to switch from one side to the other side, it has a, a huge cost. And currently with VLC, we are doing decoding on hardware, some scaling, some tone mapping and rendering, but not all the effect we had before or the uh, text rendering. So another benefit of using hello decoding is this is really efficient. Uh, you, you can uh, save a lot of power. Uh, for example, this is uh, the decoding of a 4K video, HDR video, uh, on a Windows platform, uh, and everything mostly is done on GPU. So as you can see, we only use a 7% CPU, where we were mostly using all your CPU before. And compared to some other players uh, on that platform, we are even more efficient than them. Uh, so, the current trend is uh, towards 4K, uh, but it uh, creates uh, a world set of uh, new problems, uh, because uh, when you're going from a HD resolution, to from a full HD resolution to 4K, everything is far more complex. Like for subtitle blending, uh, if you want to rescale the picture, to okay, um, it's gone. Uh, it's fine. Okay, I don't know why it loses the signal. Uh, if you want to render uh, subtitles over 4K videos, then you have to manage uh, to draw a bigger amount of pixels, which is really slow. So you can do SIMD, uh, which is a parallel parallelization in assembly. Uh, it helps, but it's not enough. This is still slow. So we need to move, as I said before, we, we are doing some steps on the GPU, but not everything. So we need to move uh, all those steps in shaders and gel buffers, which means on the GPU. So acceleration is fast. Uh, it saves a lot of power. Uh, this is required. Um, OK, again. This is required uh, for all the new video resolutions. But when we did enable 3D uh, acceleration, we had some strange feedback from the community. Uh, it was not really expected because we had uh, a lot of tests, but uh, we also received some hate mail, a lot of hate mail, as you can see. Um, people were not really happy. Well, some people, and uh, we tried to understand why. So, and those people are not totally wrong because we fucked up some things. Um, so on the, the most common bugs is people had black, black screen, green screen, whatever screen you want. You have pixel, big pixel, pink usually because this is because of the YUV things. Uh, or on some devices like Apple devices, you had a reboot feature with some videos. Uh, uh, not sure if this is uh, fixed yet. Uh, mostly this is just because of drivers. Uh, most drivers are not complete or exposing a totally broken feature, like they say they can do 10-bit and they can't. So when you throw them 10-bit videos, everything is wrong. Uh, and there is no way to tell. So the only way is to identify for the drivers and blacklist them. But uh, this is mostly the reason we didn't solve it earlier. You need a lot of devices, driver versions, platforms, and even more devices if you consider the Android devices, the Apple devices. So it needs far more, lo far more testing than just releasing a new version 
on purely software decoding. So you need uh, a lot of hardware devices now. Um, so this is really confusing for the user because they can't understand that uh, it doesn't work uh, because of their hardware, and we can't tell. Uh, so if they don't ask us, we can't, we can't really fix their, their problem. Uh, so uh, hardware also have some limits. You have some profile for decoding videos, uh, which means uh, your hardware will only decode up to 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, uh, which also means you have a maximum decoding speed, uh, which mostly is related to the frame rate. Uh, and people can't really understand that uh, when they were doing some uh, uh, non real time playback on their previous video, like some people like to uh, accelerate videos to play it uh, faster when they are taking the train because uh, they have some deadline on time. Uh, it no longer works on hardware because you're going sometimes over the hardware limit, which you could do in software because software doesn't have really a limit except your CPU limit. And you, can f you have the feedback. That in that case. And also, uh, if you want to encode in hardware, uh, you have also some limits. You can't, you, there is some simplification into the silicon to encode your videos, which gives sometimes lower quality and uh, less options. So that's mostly for transcoding. Uh, OK, let's come back. And from our point of view, uh, okay, not sure what the problem is. From uh, our developer point of view, we want to uh, uh, to because VLC is mostly modules uh, and range it in a stream. So we want decoders. We want to target our decoders, but most of uh, platform are providing directly SDK. So they want us to throw them the video and do everything. And this is against the philosophy of VLC, where we want to take the video and transform it and probably restream it or uh, do other things. So uh, we, we usually don't have access to uh, uh, a real and complete API to drive the hardware, especially faulty hardware. Uh, and with the same API, for example, on Android, uh, with Media SDK, um, we have uh, the same API, but you have totally different behavior depending on the chipset. And you have totally different bugs. And this is really hard to identify. Uh, because they don't really provide this version of the hardware. Um, and you have also have some uh, rendering interaction bugs, depending if you have uh, OpenGL video, or if you are on a Windows platform, uh, of e or if you have a HDR uh, screen or not, and HDR-capable hardware, or this is really uh, really difficult. Uh, and some uh, decoders are really bad designed, like on iOS. Uh, if you are not using their own SDK, you have to do everything by hand, like uh, reordering frames. Uh, in most codecs today, frames are not uh, in the, uh, the output order of the, the frames is not, is not in the display order. And uh, there is uh, some real doing to be done. And most of the decoders in the world are doing it, except uh, with Apple software, when you, you have to do it uh, by hand. Uh, and there's some other tricky, tricky things in the API, which also crash. Like, they don't really support interlaced 
videos. And, and Intelist is still around uh, in, the broadcast, in the broadcast world. Um, so all those issues are incrementally fixed in 3.0. Uh, they're still issues, but it gets better. So uh, hardware is fast. Uh, uh, it's a slower. This is mandatory. And moving everything in the GPU um, probably is better, uh, but uh, there is lots of limitations uh, right now. Uh, it also creates a lot of fragmentation. Uh, as I said, we need a lot of new devices to test uh, a lot of hardware. We need uh, to test a lot of different versions and drivers um, before we blacklist it them. Uh, we also need to support some uh, native UI on uh, new devices. Uh, this is mostly for uh, Android platforms and uh, Apple platform. Um, yeah, uh, which means uh, we have a lot of issue to deal with uh, because of uh, the increasing number of platforms and uh, we need more people to deal with those issues. So, uh, what you are expecting today is uh, to talk about 4.0. Uh, so, 4.0 uh, will be named Auto Check, uh, which is still from this world. Uh, we have uh, 4K commits, a bit more, maybe 6K now. Uh, we did a lot of uh, archi architecture changes. Uh, uh, because uh, we really need it. Uh, we are still uh, inheriting from the MPEG, uh, MPEG 2 times, uh, some concepts we, we broke from that time. And which date is uh, when it's done, as usual. So we did uh, uh, a huge rework of the, of the internal playlist uh, to be simpler, to be, to be able to delegate most of the feature to the UI. Uh, we did also rework the input manager. Uh, that's what old uh, and on resources. Uh, we did some unified architecture uh, for all platforms. Uh, we are working towards uh, gapless audio playback, uh, which everyone wants. Um, but we are mainly are a video player, so. Music player and video player worlds are a bit different, so that's quite a uh, difficult task or so. And we also um, will be providing a real media library, um, like uh, you will, if you want to save your, your playlist or import uh, some uh, foreign uh, playlist uh, uh, on uh, UPnP or everything, uh, it will be far easier. And we also uh, have reworked the clock, uh, which is uh, the core uh, of VLC, uh, which uh, gives times uh, uh, everywhere uh, to be accurate in your, your playback. So before we had uh, a PCR based, uh, mostly based on MPEG 2, as I said, uh, update uh, of the clock, um, but we introduced a new, uh, a new clock uh, where we have uh, a CPU clock and uh, we, uh, one master clock, which is uh, now based on the audio output for pacing. So you will no longer experience some uh, uh, glitch in the audio, which you could have uh, with the current version when you start the videos. But you can also pick uh, a PCR uh, or another clock. And you, this clock is also driving some slaves, uh, which is now video or subtitles. Uh, and it will also improve synchronization because between uh, those uh, single data sources, uh, subtitles or other videos or other audio streams. So this is a huge benefit. And uh, on 4.0, we move our, our build to, uh, from uh, auto, auto tools to Mison. Uh, we will have a new video output architecture to deal with, uh, with hardware decoding, mostly because it will prevent us from uh, allowing a lot of memory 
to be able to do hardware decoding. Uh, so we'll be more efficient. Uh, we will have uh, in synchronous audio output, uh, mostly uh, to be able to do gapless audio. Um, we will have a new video filter API, so this is mostly for developers. Uh, a Wayland video output, so if you want to know a bit more about Wayland, uh, there is a talk uh, this afternoon by Remy which did the work. Um, we might have some Vulkan video output also, and on, for macOS users, we will have uh, touch power support, mostly gadget, anyway. And we will have an uh, interface, a new interface, modern interface, uh, on, based on QT, QT Quick. So this is mostly for Windows and Linux users, uh, and we will have uh, light and dark themes. So how does it look like uh, now? Well, uh, mostly this is uh, like the uh, Windows IT builds you might have seen. Um, something more modern, more smooth. Uh, we will be able to bring some uh, video effects. Um, this is a big change. Uh, and the, the default term might be dark by default or light, we, we don't really know. We, we need some feedback uh, about this first. Uh, this is a new uh, video screen. Uh, we try to have it uh, uh, borderless, uh, fully borderless for video. Uh, and uh, for the audio, we will have the playlist on the slides uh, or the options on the, on the side which you could slide in. Uh, so it looks like uh, most of the players uh, today. And we will also bring some uh, 3D support uh, for side-by-side -side videos, uh, stereoscopic and uh, 360, which we already have, and maybe MVC video, which is uh, 3D Blu-rays. So we, we did some change. Uh, we enabled the OpenGL by default. We brought in the 3.0 the 360 videos. We plan to bring the Stereo 3D. And uh, what's the next step? Uh, well, we will bring uh, HMD support in uh, 4.0. Uh, we already did some uh, demos. Uh, uh, so we, you will be able to use uh, any HMD device uh, without uh, any specific uh, SDK, uh, which means you will be able to watch your video with Oculus, Vive, Starbreeze, Windows HMD, op mostly provided by OpenHMD, or even a cardboard on Android. And you will be also able to have uh, a a virtual uh, theater to watch your videos. It depends if you want to be first or first. So bringing uh, everyone uh, technology, uh, which is an, a new open source uh, codec, which is mostly targeting uh, to be patent free, uh, provide more, more, uh, more cooperation, which is far more efficient than uh, uh, HEVC. Uh, hardware support is coming, and uh, this is already available in uh, VLC 3 uh, since the 3.0.5 release. And uh, VideoRun is also working on a uh, on, uh, decoder, uh, which is sponsored by Mozilla, uh, which is David, uh, and uh, replaced uh, LibAOM uh, in uh, 3.0 branch uh, because uh, the previous decoder was quite slow. Uh, this decoder is really fast, uh, at least on AVX2. It uses lots of SIMD, and uh, this is uh, now also available in Firefox, uh, Chromium, FFmpeg, Handbrake. Um, so all is good. We just need uh, hardware support because it's still using a lot of CPU because this is really a next generation codec. 
uh, on the cross Chromecast side, uh, we are trying to bring uh, hardware accelerated uh, encoding to be able to stream more efficiently, like uh, with oh, okay, SMT uh, we on Intel platform, and uh, also subtitle support. Um, for platform, we will drop Windows XP uh, in all the old platforms, uh, also the old Android and the old iOS um, to be able to be more efficient in all development mostly because there are a lot of uh, old bugs we can't really solve and uh, which are bringing a lot of uh, issues. Uh, in the near future, uh, we are targeting a l lower latency, uh, a new web interface if you're using it, to bring also support for DRMs uh, to be able to see protected content. Uh, to be uh, more secure, uh, if you heard about uh, the NSA uh, targeting uh, our products. Uh, so we will introduce sand sandboxing. Uh, Rust, uh, do more fuzzing. Uh, we have a Hacker One uh, pr uh, session currently running. Uh, we have found a lot of bugs, which will be fixed. We also uh, working on VLC.js, which is mostly VLC in WebAssembly, it quite runs in your browser right now because the, the web plugins uh, are dead technology. Um, so we have some demos you can test probably. Uh, it works, but it's still slow because this is uh, GS. Okay, well, uh, if you have questions, uh, I will be very happy to answer. Uh, this picture is really old. It's when I was a student and I didn't know yet I would work on VLC. So, already music, making music with calls. <laughs> Thank you. Um, round of applause, please. Okay. And questions from the audience? Uh, yeah, hi. So, uh, in the just uh, one or two slides before, you said that uh, basically you'll be implementing the hardening as well. Uh, in the VLC, so basically, uh, especially sandboxing. So, will that mean that a third-party application will try to access VLC? It will be run in a virtualized environment, and if it is kind of hassle-free over there, then it will be run on VLC. Something of that sort uh, of be, uh, sandboxing will be implemented, or something else? Okay, so uh, if I understand correctly, you asked me if we will uh, sandbox it into uh, some container containerization to be able to. Uh, to be able to run VLC or something else. Uh, VLC is modular, so we, we want to isolate uh, each module to provide less capabilities for each module. Uh, like the video output, just want to, to have access to the video uh, hardware and nothing else. Uh, like the decoder, just want to have access to the CPU or maybe the hardware decoding and nothing else, and the demuxer, where most of the issues are only to have access to the CPU, and of course memory. Uh, the big challenge in this is uh, to share data between all those modules, because you usually need high bandwidth, and uh, doing this in a secure way uh, and fast way is uh, where the challenge is, in fact. So it won't change the way you will run VLC. You will just launch it, uh, and everything will be done internally. In fact. Sure. Thank you. Yes. When will VLC 4.0 be released? When so will the 4.0 version be released? So when the 4.0 release will be? Uh, well, as when I said uh, when it's done. <laughs> Uh, the 3.0 was two years late, so maybe I can tell you that the 4.0 might be released by the end of the year. Really, I, I don't know. Uh, there is main challenge. Uh, Remy knows a lot of uh, some issues are that which are not really solved in the core. Uh, because we did some architecture changes, uh, we are still working. Uh, maybe the end of the year. I, I don't know. Really, I, I would like to to, to 
to be enthusiastic for you and tell you, yeah, we we'll soon. Uh, seriously, I, I, I really can answer. Yep, so um, a final question here. What is history of the item? Why is it uh, white box? Okay, why is a cone? Yeah, yeah so there's the usual questions. Okay, um, people which started the project at Ecole Central um, so, um, did uh, collect traffic cones, you know, students, alcohol, uh, by night. Sometimes we do things. So we had some quite collection of cones, and when we started this project, uh, one of the members used this uh, as uh, the first uh, symbol for the project, and uh, that's how it started, and now we are using it for 20 years, maybe? 15? A bit more than 15 years? Okay, so um, a final question here. Um, earlier in the presentation, there was a mention of we quite a few times, we um, doing the commits and so on. How many people is there actively committing or working on this project? Uh, the core team is 10 to 15 people um, because there is uh, some uh, side companies working and providing uh, uh, some employment for people to be able to work time of it, but um, the real core team, maybe seven people, including Remy, which is here, uh, which are really, really, really committing maybe daily. Um, and how many in the, the community? Community, uh, I think every year we have 30 people, 40 people changing things, uh, not including the translators and... Uh, um, okay, so I guess um, I mean, uh, you guys uh, could be next. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, round of applause for Francois. Okay.